this is Jimmy Cavs 5150 interview series of Bulldozer Magazine here on the second night of the Jesse Pintado 2015 Gricor Festival. This is a special treat for me. Standing here next to me is Julio the Bastard from Crippled Bastards. How are you? Fine, fine. Very tired, but fine. Welcome back to the City of Angels. Thank you very much. Last time you were here was 2003, correct? Yeah, 2003 we played uh, in Hollywood with uh, Final Conflict, Lack of Interest, Phobia, and some more bands. Wow, man. Yeah. You're playing tonight. Uh, tonight we're honoring Jesse Pintado. Yeah. Okay? Napalm Death Terrorizer. Yeah. How influential was he to, towards your band? I mean, you've been around since 1988, but um, are you a Terrorizer fan? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, sure. And I uh, had um, to shape the sound of our band in the... Uh, especially in the early 90s and uh, when we turned from in the beginning we were like a more kind of a noise core band with short songs when we started to get into the grindcore thing uh, then especially terrorizer were nice. like um, many influence so yeah i love the, the way and his ideas the way you to play great one of the things that i really appreciate about not only crippled bastards but bands from italia especially way back in the early 80s like raw power and so yeah. forth is the fact that Bands like yourselves from your country are very aggressive and raw and dangerous and it's not an act. Here in the United States sometimes some bands they go on stage and they pretend to be raw. Yeah. You guys don't have no shtick, you don't wear no makeup or nothing, it's just aggressive real music. Does that have to do because of the country you come from? Uh, I think uh, that the social factor is important but it's all about life and uh, frustrations and stuff like that. You, you, you take out uh, the, the spirit and what you have inside and that, that makes the aggression. So is that, is when you're playing and you're writing your music, is this how you get out your frustrations from what you're dealing with? Yeah, definitely. It's like uh, all the rage inside and uh, uh, all the bad of life uh, is coming out. You know, the evil of life is coming out and uh, it gets in the face. But the Crippled Bastards is a very fucking aggressive, dangerous, angry band. You don't seem very aggressive and angry. Oh, maybe we'll see later. <laughs> <laughs> At the airport, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be playing only a select few shows here. You're playing the Jesse Pintado Grindcore Fest here on Saturday. Yeah. You're playing Mexico, Tijuana, Tijuana Sunday. Yeah, also for honoring Jesse Pintado tomorrow, the, the Grindcore Fest Tijuana. Then we go to Mexico DF. Oh, and, wow. and then to Guadalajara. And then we do one show at the um, uh, Horror uh, Festival in uh, Texas. The, the Phil Ensemble? The House Horror Festival, the uh, Phil Anselmo's one, yeah. One of the things that I really like about your music, aside from it being aggressive and dangerous, as we discussed, is the fact of the lyrical content. Yeah. What is it that influences your songs? about the lyrics yeah it's uh, just you know writing about life N no kind of influence from other bands when it comes to the lyrics uh, just write to what uh, i live in my everyday life and that's all is it the social commentary what you're experiencing in italy S yeah it's like um, it's difficult to explain uh, it's like uh, yeah half social and half it's like very personal you know it's like uh, um, my eye on on the outside world yeah. Your, your view of society and the yeah. hypocrisy and the bullshit? Yeah, yeah, especially that. Why do you think the Crippled Bastards have been such an influential band in the extreme underground music for almost two decades? 1988, that's a long time. Yeah, you know, because our sound has been always changing through the years and uh, it has always been very extreme. So, you know, from the early singles to the stuff that we do today, uh, it's very specific. It's, uh, so maybe it's, that's the reason why. It's like kind of unique for many people. And uh, I see we have good feedback, especially like uh, in uh, um, South America. Uh, the, the, also because of the Italian uh, lyrics. We sing in Italian, um, you know, it's similar to Spanish. Uh, this gets uh, people from countries like Mexico or South America closer. And uh, this is one of the reasons. Then also the, the musical factor, the early singles were like very noisy. Yeah. Um, uh, at the time there weren't so many bands doing something so, so extreme. Do you think also, and this is something that I've always wanted to ask you, do you think also that not only here in the United States, but like the different countries that you mentioned. Yeah. There's been such a, a, a grasp with your music because, especially like in Mexico, South America, etc., 
the political and economical climate. The yeah. fact the fact that you're really touching base with the struggles of everyday life. Do you think that's why the extreme underground, especially with the youth, are very attracted to crippled bastards? Yeah, that could be one of the reasons. You know, the social background and um, in those countries that we mentioned, like people are very poor. So that's also another uh, factor of frustration and anger. So that could be another reason too. Back in 1988, technology wasn't such a factor like it is now you know we were making fanzines yeah, we were right. we, we were tape trading diy vinyl uh, uh record labels now with technology it seems like kids tend to have everything at their disposal do you think this generation is really understanding what crippled crippled bastards is about especially the diy ethic it's very different now because the the newer generations, uh, you know, th there is a comeback of vinyl now, but uh, and there are young people buying records vinyl, but still uh, there is a completely different mentality so far as it it concerns music, yeah. you know, because uh, the kids are not more like uh, um, uh, um, going after a record like you know when I was a kid I was yeah, mad was for it finding was, it, that demo. It was a hunger. Yeah. That's it. It was excitement. Uh, now it's like one song here, one song there. It's like doing compilations uh, and checking on YouTube. It's like having a, um, getting like a, a fragmented culture on music, not like something complete or finding the, the very rare stuff from deep South America. That's what yeah. like I grow up with. Um, some kids are still in that mood, but majority are not like that.